thank you for joining uh, the session. Uh, my name is Tanish. I work at SUSE as a container engine engineer. That basically means I work with um, tools such as Podman, Builder, and uh, subsequent dependencies such as container image, container storage, these kind of things. I maintain these packages for SUSE downstream, all the SUSE distributions, OpenSUSE and uh, SLE. Um, at the same time, I also contribute all of them upstream uh, to, to GitHub. And today, I want to talk about uh, container images. Uh, how many of you folks have used container images? Just a show of hands. OK, cool. How many of you have built container images using tools such as, OK, cool. And how many have created container images? Let's say just manually created images. Nice, cool. OK, so what I really want to understand in this talk is um, what a container image really is. Um, when, when you run a command such as podman build or docker build, what is the artifact that is generated that you can then use to create a container based off of, right? So when you run podman build, there is the, this thing called container image that is being created, and then you use that to run a container, container right? So I want to dive deeper into uh, this particular artifact that we call the container image. So this is what we'll be covering today, roughly. This is an agenda. We'll talk about container image, uh, the theory part. Uh, so we'll talk about the different components that are part of a container image, how they interact with each other, so on and so forth. Then we'll move to um, a little bit of practical bit. We'll talk about how you can build an image. Although you will never do this, uh, because there are specialized tools to do this. This is just purely for the sake of learning how to, um, like how these tools build an image. So we'll uh, build an image, and then we'll uh, do a demo. And we'll try to uh, see that whether that image that we've just built works uh, functionally equal to, let's say, if we had a container file to build an image, right? So, so again, back to the original question, what is a container image, really? Um, a little bit of history here before we go on. So up until fairly recently, and when I say fairly recently, I mean 10 years back, 2014-ish, uh, there was only one container image that was very popular that was used by all the uh, tooling. And back then, predominantly, it was Docker. And the image format was called Docker image format. And uh, with the emergence of all the container tooling that was happening around 2015, there was a need for standardization of container images, right? And so this project called Open Container Initiative was established. This is now a Linux Foundation project. And it aims to standardize all things containers, right? So, for, so naturally, it uh, created a standard for images, which we call the image specification. Uh, sh in short, it's known as image spec, OCI image spec. And so for the sake of this presentation, whenever I say an image, I mean an OCI image, and vice versa, right? So this is, uh, on the right-hand side, you can see a faded diagram of an OCI image. And uh, there are majorly four, more, uh, four components. And then uh, we'll talk about each of them, and then we'll fill the diagram in. So I want to start off with layers. Uh, I think pretty much everybody has heard about layers. And uh, when you ask somebody what is a container image, it is very common to hear the statement that a, a container is made, made up of layers, different layers, right? But what really is a layer? So loosely defined, a, a layer is basically what defines what's inside your container, right? Um, things like, let's say, the container file system, your source code, your startup scripts, uh, or let's say when you do a package install inside your container, all of these are part of layers. They somehow make up the layer, and then we'll understand how, does, how that happens in a bit. And, uh, more technically defined, a layer is a file system chain set, right? So one way to understand that is uh, you have two file systems, and you take a diff of that, and that is what a layer is. And we call that a file system chain set. So let's try to understand with, with an example. I think it'll be easier for you to understand that with an example. Let's imagine that we have this uh, simple container file, and then it has uh, the base image is Alpine. And uh, then we are running one command, uh, sort of like a chain of command. Uh, we are removing the Alpine shell from the base image. And then we are in installing or modifying, in, in fact, uh, the bash shell, right? 
And there are also a bunch of other statements in this, in this Docker file, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, we're not going to uh, focus on all of that. We just focus on these two statements. So how do you create a chain set? How do you create a layer? So you start with an initial file system. And in our case, it's uh, this Alpine base image. And it, it is a directory structure, and then it has a lot of files. But we're focusing on these two files. We have the Alpine shell, and we have the Born Again shell, right? Uh, in order to create a layer, you need to create a snapshot of the initial file system. So what we do is just simply we'll do a CPRP of this particular whole tree, and then uh, we make changes to that snapshot. So in our case, we do a CPRP. All, all of the other files remain the same. But in this case, uh, we've removed Alpine shell, and we've added uh, or we've modified the bash shell. We've, that is assuming that bash was already part of the Alpine image. Right, so this, this is a modified view of this original snap, snapshot, and we made only two changes. Now, using this, you create a layer, and the way to do that is you compare all the items in each of the file systems one by one recursively. And you only include things, or you only include files that have been either modified, deleted, or added. So in this case, we've deleted the Alpine shell, and then we have modified the Bash shell. And you create a tar archive with only these files. So it looks like this in our case, right? So this is a tar archive, and uh, it, has, uh, it, it deletes the Alpine shell. And the way you denote deletions is using a whiteout prefix. Uh, in this case, you see that we deleted the binary Alpine shell, and then we give it a prefix, wh. That means that this file has been deleted. And the way you add or modify files, you just keep them as is. So if there is a file in the chain set um, without a prefix, that means that it has either been modified or it has been added. So, so we've deleted one and we've modified one. Um, and this is at our archive. So using file systems, your container engine or your container tool, container build tool, it creates uh, a set of layers depending on the instructions in your container file. Right? So, so this is um, how we create a layer. So let's understand how we can use layers, how using multiple layers you can create a file system. So again, now this is a layer. We are not uh, talking about file systems anymore. This is, this is a layer. And we start with an empty layer, uh, which means that there were uh, no files as such, no additions, no removal, and no files essentially. Then we have another, another layer. And this is just linking back to the previous slide. Uh, this layer adds two files. Uh, it, add, it, it adds the Alpine shell, and it adds the Bash shell. And then there is a final layer, uh, again, uh, similar to the last slide. It just deletes the Alpine shell, and then it uh, updates or modifies the Bash shell. Now, the container engine or the build tool of your choice will use all these layers, and then it will stack each of them on top of each other in, in ascending order, left to right, right? And then once you do that, you get the complete file system, which in this case only has the bash uh, binary. Um, it should be bin bash, but I, I think you get the idea. So you start with nothing. You apply layer 1 as a chain set on top of layer 0, and then you get two files. Then you apply layer 2 on top of layer 1, uh, and then you remove ash, and then you re add bash. And this is what you get. And just to uh, recap both the, both the previous slides, you give your container tool, let's say podman in this case, a container file. And then you run the command podman build. It generates n number of layers, right? So let's just suppose we create three layers. And this three layers constitute uh, an, an image. And then once you have the image, now then you run the podman run command using this image. The container engine will use all these images. And then as we saw in the last slide, it will create a container file system. And this is what you get when you run your container. and then. Uh, let's say you run user bin bash. And that is how bash comes from um, a container file or a base image to your container, actually running container. Right, so that was layers. The next important um, component of the OCI um, image is the config. So config is essentially, uh, again, loosely defined as how you run the container. So what kind of options you want to pass to the container. These options can uh, range from, let's say, environment variables, your UID, GID, submapping, um, users, entry point, 
And then I think if, if you've used containers enough, you can um, uh, relate to this, that you can also op pass these options as command line arguments. Uh, so that being said, there is no real need to specify the config if you intend to pass these options while you run the container. So this is optional. The config is optional. But uh, more often than not, I think you, you will come across container files which has defined environment variables, which defines the user. It exposes the ports, all kinds of things, because you don't want to do this while you run the container, because that is not declarative most, most of the times. Um, so once you have the config and the layers ready, uh, you, the, the container engine or the build tool of your choice will use this file called a manifest file. It's a JSON file to refer to the layers in the config. So essentially, the job of a manifest file is to specify the address for uh, or the location for config and layers. Right? So that, that's all it does. It's pretty straightforward. Until you notice the fact that I am specifying some kind of hash here. Uh, for both the configuration and the layer. So what's really going on? This is SHA-256 digest. And uh, in order to understand that, uh, we need to understand the fact that in an OCI image, the config, the manifest, and the layers are all part of something called a content addressable store. right? Um, this is just a fancy way of saying that uh, it's a concept. And it says that it's a, it's a way to store information based on its content. right? So a simple example to understand this is, let's imagine you have a simple text file. It has some content. And you compute the SHA-256 sum of this particular file. And then you refer to this file using this uh, digest. right? Pretty straightforward. And how, how does it help? So how does it help, really? Um, it helps with three things, primarily. It helps, first, with deduplication. So since you're referring to the file based on its content, no matter what the file uh, name is or uh, where the file is, no matter what the location is, it can be identified with this particular uh, digest. And then you can essentially keep just one copy of the file um, across your layout. Right? So uh, deduplication, then there is layer sharing. So just imagine you have a huge container file. And then in line number two, you do apk add bash. And in line number 93, also, you do apk add bash. So it will generate two similar layers. But since we've calculated the compute, uh, uh, the SHA-256 hash of those layers, we can only store one layer, and then we can use it in both the places. Not that's something that you will do often, but uh, this is what content addressability is. And so in the OCI image, uh, these three components are represented as uh, with their content addresses. So, so you basically create these components, and then you compute the SHA, and then you store them um, like so. right? So this is how it looks. We'll have a closer look at it uh, during the demo, but uh, this, is, this is an important bit. Um, and finally, the last um, component is the index.json. So one way to understand this is what manifest does for layers and config, and index does for manifests. Right. Um, so another way, like uh, a good way to understand this is the fact that uh, an OCI image, an OCI image as a whole can have multiple images in itself. Right. Um, what does that really mean? Uh, it means that there can be multiple content address stores within an OCI image. Right. So one example is, let's say you have multi-platform images. For example, you, your index.json can point to two different manifests. One could be for Linux ARM64, one could be AMD64. And then the manifest, in turn, will provide layer and configuration information for those specific platforms. So this way, let's say this whole image is uh, an Alpine image, but they provide it for different architectures. This is how it will look if you, uh, if you break it open, if you break open the image archive. Um, so that's that. And with that, we have the model of, of an image. We, we have the content addressable store, and then um, we have an index or JSON that points to the manifest, and this whole constitutes an OCI image. Right? Now, let's move to the fun part. Let's try to build an image. First, we'll understand the basic uh, contents that are part of all these components, and then we'll um, actually do a demo and then uh, see how it works in real life. So where do we start? 
so we want to create an image that is functionally equivalent to this Docker file, this container file. And it should generate the same output uh, as when you pass in this container file to a command like docker build or podman build, right? Uh, it is based on no file system, so Scratch is a special base image that generates no file system. Um, and then we're going to write a very simple hello world program in C, and we're going to statically compile it, and then we'll copy it to our container. And then we set that as the entry point. So whenever you run uh, the container image with a podman run or docker run command, it just directly invokes the binary. Um, so how do we get started? We get started by defining the layout of our image. So in this case, um, the OCS spec that defines the layout for an image. And uh, we've, we've already seen all the components, but this is how they look in, in a directory tree. We, we specify the content addressable store inside a directory called blobs. Uh, and then inside of that directory, we create another directory, uh, which is basically the name of the cryptographic algorithm that we use to compute the digest, right? So in this case, uh, it will be SHA-256. And then we add the config, we create the manifest, and we create the layers. And then at the root level lies our index.json that, that is going to point to our manifest. Right, so this, this makes up a one OCI image that we're going to be creating now. So let's create the layer. Um, so we have uh, our, uh, let's say we have the hello C program, and we create a static binary out of it. And uh, then we create a gzipped tar archive for this only binary. So there is just a single binary in this archive, and we just call it layer.tar.gz. Then we make it content adjustable. And very simple, again, we're just going to compute the SHA and then uh, rename the layer to this. right? And then at this point, I've already created the directory. So if you look at uh, the directory layout at this point, we have the blobs directory, we have the SHA-256 subdirectory, and then we have uh, our one and only layer so far, which includes our statically compiled C binary. Okay, uh, We're going bottom up. So next up is config. Um, Again, very straightforward, uh, a little bit of metadata. We define the architecture, the platform. And the only piece of configuration we really want to pass to our container image is uh, the entry point. So we specify that here. And then that little dance at the end uh, is essentially just making the config file content addressable. Right? So if you're just renaming it to its SHA-256 sum. Um, going further up, we have the manifest. A little verbose, but uh, again, a little bit of metadata, and then we just specify config and layers. So we specify the schema version, which is essentially the image spec that the OCI um, tool, whatever tool is going to consume your image, uh, is going to look at the schema version and then assume that there is going to be a certain directory structure that I need to parse this image as, right? Uh, then media type is essentially um, a label, an indicator of the type of component this is. So in this case, it's a manifest, it's a JSON. Um, and now we point to our config. So again, there is an identifier for the config. It's in JSON format. And then we refer to it via its content address. Right? So we specify the algorithm, and then we specify the digest for our config. And then we also specify the size. We do the same for the layers. And if you notice, this is an array, because there can be more than one layer. And then uh, our layer, if you remember, it was a gzip tar archive. And this is the identifier for that. So that the tool of your choice knows what I need to do with this particular uh, content address. If it is gzip archive, it, it's going to extract it accordingly. And then we specify the size, again, the shell dance to make it content accessible. Um, and finally, to wrap this up, we create the index.json file, and again, just linking back to what we learned in the previous section. Uh, nothing fancy here. We're just going to point to the manifest. Uh, the media type is uh, manifest JSON, content address, the size. And additionally, if you notice, as part of this manifest, we're also going to specify the image name and the, and the tag. right? And, uh, and that's about it. We're not going to make it content addressable, because this does not lie under the content addressable store. Once you're done with all of those steps, you have your four components ready. 
um, just winging it here. Uh, maybe let's say this is the layer, this is the config, and this is the manifest. And we have uh, the index.json that points to the manifest. We package this up as a tar archive. Uh, just note that this is not zipped. This is not compressed. This is simply a tar archive. And, uh, and that's about it. And then we can simply load it to Podman or Docker or any tool of your choice which supports OCI images. And you can see that we have the image. The tag is there. And you can run it. And you can see uh, the output that you expect. So let's try to uh, do this. Uh, so this is my uh, image directory, nothing here. So I'm going to create the content addressable store here. And first things first, I'm going to create the file. So I've already created the files so that you don't have to watch me painfully type JSONs. But it's a simple hello world C program, uh, nothing fancy here. I'm going to compile it, make a static binary out of it. And uh, this is how it looks, right? Now, I make a gzipped tar archive of this, um, this hello binary, right? And uh, if I open it up, you see that this is nothing but just, again, the binary that we just added to it. So just based on Scratch, we don't have anything else going on here. We compute the, OK, yes. So we make it content addressable. And if you look at the directory now, you can see that we have a layer. And we can get rid of these files. So this is how it looks so far, right? Now let's create the config.json. Uh, All right. Um, so we need uh, okay. Here we don't actually need anything. All we need to do is tell the container that this is an entry point, and when you run the container, you need to run this binary, and that's about it. Um, save it and. Uh, just make this content addressable as well. So now we have, um, you can actually look at the size of these uh, items. So you can figure out which is the layer and which is the config, if you're having a hard time finding that out. And now that we have the config and the layer ready, what we can do now is we can create the manifest. So, right. Uh, so in the manifest, I need to specify the config. Uh, I can do that by specifying um, which is the manifest, five, six, right. And then I specify the size. And then I come down, and it needs me to specify the layer as well, which is 4 TB. And I specify the size. Size, right? Very straightforward. Um, yep, looks good. So we have our content addressable store ready. We just need to make this also content addressable. And we have the cast ready, right? And now if we move out of this and then we create the index.json, which is going to point to this manifest and then your container um, tool can make use of your image. So this is how it looks so far. We remain uh, with the index.json that we need to create now. Again, uh, I've already created the templates. Uh, I need to. So I know that this is my um, manifest. And uh, I specify that here. And I also specify the size here. Let's also give our image a name. 
And since we're basing it on Scratch, let's tag it as Scratch, right? And we're done. Let's see if this works or not. So we need to package it up. Nothing fancy. We don't need to compress it. Um, we create a tar archive with all the files inside this directory. And actually, let me just remove. OK. How oh, cool. Um, so now I can load this tar directory into Podman. And it has loaded it. It says that this particular image with uh, this name and this tag has been loaded. And uh, yes, we can see our image has been loaded into the con container store. It's 10 seconds ago. Now if we run it, and we get the same output, right? So go back to the presentation. I'm going to be doing one more modification to this whole thing, um, just so that we understand how multiple layers in a container image work. So we're going to modify the image or uh, the container file. And then instead of basing it on Scratch, which is nothing, we're going to base it on Alpine uh, base image. Um, Again, we're going to copy the static binary. But this time around, we're going to modify the entry point and add time uh, as a prefix to our uh, hello entry point, just to show that images or binaries from these two layers on top can work in tandem when you run a container. right? Uh, the kind of modifications needed here would be that, of course, you need the Alpine base uh, root FS, uh, which is readily available from the Alpine website. So you can get it here. and uh, you create a layer out of it, you move it to the CAS, and um, once you've done this, then you need to refer, uh, no, actually, you need to modify the config also. I think I've um, misplaced the slides, but we need to modify the config because we are modifying the entry point. So now you have time here as well. And once we have the config and the layer ready, then we need to refer to the both of them because now we've modified the content. The, uh, shark digest also changes, and the size, right? So we modify the the content address and the size for the config and the layers, right? And uh, finally, since we modified the manifest, the the content address of the manifest also changes. So we just simply need to update the index file, and we will quickly see this as well. Uh, So I've already downloaded the root FS because I did not want to rely on the internet here. Um, right. This is already gzipped archived, so I don't really need to uh, do the extraction and gzipping again. I can just simply calculate the or make it content addressable, right? So now we have a new layer, uh, this one, because it's the biggest in size. Uh, now what do we need to do? We need to modify the config, because we need to modify the entry point. Uh, yeah, so. You do that, and then since we modified the config, it changes um, its address, and we create a new one. Right? Um, so config is modified. We have created a new layer. Now we need to update the manifest. And the manifest is this. Uh, OK, so modify the config, digest here. It's this one. And then if you notice, the size has also changed to 149 block size. Um, this layer remains the same. So 
uh, not going to do anything here, but we create a copy of this. And the way you define layers, the ordering is sort of important because um, in, our, in our sample container file, the base image was Alpine. So in this case, Alpine has to be the first. And that is how your container tool will create all the chain sets and apply them on top of each other when it creates the layers. Um, so this one needs to be the um, Alpine base image, which I think is this one. Seven. And everything else remains the same. Come out and then since we just modified the manifest, we are going to uh, make it uh, find, find its new content address, right? OK, so nothing changes here, uh, except for the fact that we now have a new layer. Just go up the directory, and uh, we modified our manifest, and we need to specify this updated manifest in our index.json file. Uh, let's copy it. And while we're at it, we're not going to keep the, we'll actually keep the image name the same, which is going to tag it with Alpine now, so that it is easier to distinguish when we finally load it. To just get rid of the previous image. And uh, create a tar archive of this one. And then, so far, we only have um, our hello image with the scratch tag. Now, if you load, so we've loaded the Alpine base image. If we look at, yep, loaded just fine. And now, if I run, try to run this, So now we have the time command getting its output based on whatever output we have generated using the binary. So that's that. And I think that's about it uh, for me. The takeaways for this talk, I think uh, the whole idea was um, sprouted when I was trying to understand what container layers were last, sometime last year. So I wrote a blog post around it and then converted that into a talk with the demo. But I hope uh, in this particular talk, you understood the internals of a container image, what really it is, uh, what are the different components of an image, how they interact with each other, what is a config, uh, what is a layer, uh, how layers are used, how do you create a layer, and then uh, what happens when you give a container tool, a container file, how it creates a layer, and from those layers, how you create a container file system. Right? And then finally, as an auxiliary, we understood things like content addressability and also the fact that how multi-platform images in, in an OCI setting work. Um, yep, so that's about it. And I will take any questions. If you have any, you can find the slides here. You can check out the post here if you want to. Uh, it should be up shortly after, after the talk. And that's about it. Any questions? Um, first of all, love the talk. I loved how smooth uh, like the actual demo was. Like usually demos in real life, like uh, they tend to be flaky, and this could not have come at a better time for me because just last week I was trying to learn about container images, and I was looking at the OCI spec on GitHub and I was thoroughly confused. So now it's cl crystal clear. Uh, now coming to the actual questions, um, so I noticed in all those JSON files it requires you to specify the size, mm -hmm. uh, that to not even the compressed size. Sorry, the uncompressed size. We have to specify the size of the compressed file itself. Correct. Like, why is that required? Uh, like, I know it's part of the spec, but right. I don't understand the rationale behind that. I think it stems from the Docker image format. So if you look at the spec now, uh, in the config, it says that you need to specify the size of the uncompressed layer and the digest of the uncompressed layer. So this, this is actually coming, this is more of an atavistic thing that is coming from uh, the Docker image format somewhere around 10 years back. Uh, 
that is not required anymore. But in order to, the fact that you need to specify the size, I think there's no real reason, but you probably it could just be integrity. That is one way to go about it. Okay, uh, one more question. So you mentioned that uh, in the content addressable store, which is in blob slash the name of the compression, sorry, the hash algorithm. Mm -hmm. uh, so are hash algorithms other than SHA-256 supported? Yes, so there are a bunch of algorithms supported. Um, you can check the spec, uh, spec for that. But primarily, I think SHA-256 is the one used uh, across all the images. Okay, but they I, are other supported. I guess the same thing goes for the compression algorithm as well, because gzip was specified yes, there. Yes, you can look at the media types, and then it has all the kinds of compression that it supports. And then uh, whatever compression type you choose to, just make sure that media type uh, goes along with it. OK, and uh, coming to the whitelist file, so you said uh, out, yes. deletion is indicated with a dot wh prefix. Correct. What if there's already a file which has the dot wh prefix? Uh, interesting. I don't know how that works. I never tried it. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Always. Any other questions? Okay, then. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you for joining this talk.